the Copernican model of the solar system, now he actually considered it the Copernican model of the universe, uh, but the Copernican model of the solar system has the sun at the center and all the planets orbit around the sun. So this, this is actually correct. This is what happens. Uh, he made the assumption all the planets were in perfectly circular orbits. We know they're not, but this was still a major step forward. The uh, terms here, inferior planet and superior planet, that doesn't mean not as good or better. Okay, that, that's what, what this means is inferior means closer to the sun and superior means farther from the sun. So in the solar system, Mercury and Venus are inferior to Earth. They are closer to the sun. The rest of the planets, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, etc., they are superior because they're farther from the sun than Earth. Well, what about Jupiter? Well, it turns out Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all inferior to Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are superior to Jupiter. The asteroids, most of them are, are inferior to Jupiter and superior to Mars. That's the asteroid belt. That's where most of the asteroids are. And so this terminology of inferior and superior just means closer to the sun than one thing or farther than the other. So you have to say what you're inferior or superior to. And so uh, these are terminologies that we now get from this idea of everything going around the sun. And so uh, the alignments that you get also turn out to be interesting. So if you've got Earth here, then an inferior planet can sometimes get between Earth and the Sun. When that happens, we call that conjunction. You know, if, if it passes directly in front of the Sun, that's a transit. We talked about that in an earlier lecture. Uh, but normally the alignment is not perfect, so just like a new moon does not always make a solar eclipse, usually the planet doesn't pass exactly between the Earth and the Sun. It's a little bit offset, and so the closest approach there, all, when it's most lined up, is called a conjunction. Well, when it gets to the other side of the solar system, then it also lines up with the Sun as seen from Earth. And so in that case, we also call that a conjunction. So the difference between the two conjunctions is the conjunction that is between Earth and the Sun we call an inferior conjunction, and the conjunction that's on the other side of the Sun we call a superior conjunction. Well, the other thing that can happen is that if you look at from Earth, we look from Earth to the Sun and Earth to the planet out here, wherever it is, the angle between the sun and the planet we call the elongation of the planet. So the biggest the elongation can be is at a couple spots here. We have the biggest elongation in one direction here. So we have uh, 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 we have the, the, the biggest elongation here, and, and, and that's the biggest eastern elongation. We call it the greatest eastern elongation. And we have here, that's the greatest western elongation. So how big that elongation is depends on the planet. Venus is farther from the sun than Mercury, so it has a greater greatest elongation. The greatest eastern elongation means it's east of the sun in the sky. So that means and when the sun sets, the planet is still up. So it sets after sunset. Uh, the greatest western elongation means it's to the west of the sun in the sky. And so that means that the, that, um, the, the, the planet sets before the sun sets. So you don't see it at sunset. But it rises before the sun rises in the morning. So you see it as a morning object. So greatest eastern elongation, if you look... Uh, uh, at, at a table of stellar data or a table of planetary data, you know, if it says that a, a planet is a greatest eastern elongation, then what that means is that that planet is going to be visible in the evening right after sunset. Uh, and the biggest it's going to be away from the sun. So Mercury and Venus never get very far, so, but, so you want to look at it when it's at greatest. Greatest western elongation means you see it right before sunrise, the best it can be. And so that would be, that'd be things you look up. Now, for a superior planet, it's moving out here, 
And so when it, it's when Earth is between the planet and the sun, that means that you face one direction to see the sun, the other direction to the planet. So it's exactly opposite the sun in the sky. And so we call that opposition. Now, on the other hand, when it's on the other side of the sun from Earth, then it's lined up with the sun, and so that means it's really hard to see because it's up at the same time as the sun. And again, we call that conjunction. There's only one possible conjunction, so there's not, a, there's not a, an inferior or superior conjunction for a superior planet. So here we have that. Now, the two other uh, locations here, and that is if a superior planet is right there or right here, and so they're right angles, so they're right angles here with respect to the sun. So, so that means they're straight up at sunset or sunrise. And so in that case, then, um, in that case, then we would say that that is called quadrature. Okay, and so quadrature is that, that particular orientation right there. Okay, so here, that's actually the, gra the same graphic that, that, that I just had there, except this is what it looks like in the book with all the labels on it. So this is page 81 in the book. Um, and then I like this one because this one shows uh, the elongations and so forth, but it also shows the side of the planet that's lit up. So at inferior conjunction, you look at the planet and you don't actually see much because there, there's, you're seeing the dark side of the planet. If it's right before or right after inferior conjunction, then you would see a little tiny crescent planet. At greatest elongation, that's when it is close to half lit up as we see it. Okay. And then superior conjunction is when it would look full. Okay. It would look full, but it'd be a long way away from us, so it'd look small in the sky. Okay. That's actually an important thing because that, that, that turns out to be something that another astronomer used to prove that the planets really do go around the sun instead of going around the earth. Now, for a superior planet, you look at an opposition, it looks full. It would also look full at conjunction and it would look like gibbous phase when it is at eastern or western quadrature. So uh, it never looks like a crescent if it's a superior planet. It's always going to be gibbous at its smallest, and it's going to be it's going to go between gibbous and full looking. Uh, whereas for an inferior planet, it's going to look full when it's on the other side of the sun and you can't see it, uh, and it's going to look like you're going to see the dark side, so like like a new moon when it's between us, and that's when it's going to be closest and biggest. So uh, so so that again that that's going to be the, the orientations here of the planets as they go around.